Comments after the presentation? Their comments are, you are talking about this presentation? Yes. Uh, we're taking public comment now for this one. But I haven't seen it yet, so how can I comment? When it's a regular commission meeting, we have it before and okay. after. You can always bring it up after the commission meeting. The That's fine. Commission meeting. Okay.
Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I keep saying that. Okay, let's adjust it. Just pause for a moment. Is this a uh, enter to switch screens? Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Ryan Bartis. I am with the Ford Development Finance Corporation. Uh, we are located at 156 uh, Tuscaloosa Road in Winter Springs, Florida, which is just a little subdivision northeast of Orlando. So pretty close to you guys here. And I uh, just will appreciate your, uh, the opportunity to speak to you guys about this program. Uh, I'm going to give you a high, a high overview, a level review of the program. And if you guys have questions, you can definitely dive in a little bit deeper. But uh, some of this will be a little overview of what uh, Thad has already uh, presented to you. But the FDOC is a, uh, was created in 1993 as a special development uh, finance authority. And it was uh, created under 288 Part 10 of the Florida statutes. Our purpose was for economic development. And uh, we did that through a couple of different ways. Uh, one of the ways that we're doing that is through our traditional bond program where we bring uh, borrowers the ability to reach the capital markets through bonds. Uh, so we do that with uh, private activity bonds, we do that to help job creation, and then to improve the standard of living for uh, all citizens of Florida, just through the job creations and the improvement of, uh, of buildings and structures throughout Florida. So uh, one of the other opportunities we have to do that through is PACE, and as uh, Thad said, that is uh, Florida Statute 16308, that statute allows the Florida Development Finance Corporation to do, these, to do bondings or notes, one or, uh, one or the other, on these renewable energy improvements, energy efficiency and wind harvesting improvements, which here in Florida I think is, um, is definitely needed. So uh, with the hurricanes we have, with tornadoes that blow through, you want to harden both your residential homes and both your commercial homes. So this program is set up as a turnkey program for you. So what that means is there's no operational um, requirements from the town or from a city or from a county. What we do is we bring you both the financing arm of that program, uh, which would be my colleague Shay that's in the room if you have any questions on that. Um, and then we run the operational part with them. Um, from the underwriting side, we have an oversight role in that process. So as they're financing that program, as the FDFC, we're overlooking that to make sure that the improvements that are installed, the financing that is happening, a little bit different on the commercial side than the residential side. We do a little deeper dive on the residential side for our review. So these are the eligible properties can be both commercial and residential. And again, the funding and the repayment option there are is a private capital. Nothing from the town is required to fund this program. Uh, and the repayment mechanism is done through an assessment uh, services agreement with the tax collector and property appraiser, which we set up individually with the uh, county, and uh, I believe we already have both of those in place uh, here in this county. Uh, and then on the residential side, I just want to break it down uh, that we, we do have consumer protections that are in place uh, for res the residential program. Uh, what we do there is we'll look at the disclosures. We want to make sure that the financing terms are clearly defined on the disclosures. The other thing that we do, and these three, I think these are the most important, is we do a live review, which is a confirmed terms call with property owners. So even though they're looking at their financing agreement, even though you know, they're, they're their own property owner and they can make their own decision, we want to make sure that they fully understand the terms that they're presented by uh, either our providers or what's happening with their contractor at their home or at the commercial site. Uh, so on the contractor side, we also try to eliminate any issues that may be workmanship issues. And we do that by not providing payment to the contractor until the completion certificate is signed by the property owner. So if there's an issue that's happening on the residential side, at that point in time, you know, if, the, if it's not completed or something did not happen by the eligible measure being installed correctly, you can work with the provider in that case to fix it, and then the contractor would be uh, funded at that point in time. I'm going to switch over here. So again, uh, just high level here, the local government benefits to you guys. Of course, we discussed this. There's no cost to you guys. This maintains your tax base. It does that by the creation of jobs. 
So if you look at what happens with these contractors as they get the ability to use this program, jobs are added underneath HVAC, uh, any of the different contractor types that can use this program. So uh, you have that, and then when you add on these improvements to your home, it improves the value of your home, so, so of course you're raising the value of the property, which increases your assessment uh, role that you, uh, that you collect. Uh, this is also a disaster mitigation program. I talked to you about this, especially on a residential home or on commercial buildings. You're talking about hardening those buildings. So if you have a natural uh, disaster event that's happening here, you now have buildings that are hardened. So instead of a town dealing with multiple homes and multiple buildings that have issues after some kind of disaster, you have more resilient buildings and homes in place. The other thing this does is improves your building stock. Uh, what we're going to talk about today, or, or what you guys may have questions on, is this program allows for the lower cost of financing on these commercial buildings. And uh, maybe Darren will be able to speak to this a little bit more, but this is truly allowing uh, engineer, engineers or developers to look at how they're building these buildings, not only on, on the new building or the new construction side, but on the existing construction side. How can we improve those? How can we build them better? How are we going to perform you know, on the construction of that building? So it allows for the uh, improvement of the, of the building. So the, the process, the adoption process, if you guys would like to take up this program, is fairly simple. There is a form of resolution that we'll, we can provide to you uh, for your council to review. And then there's a form of an agreement that would be signed by staff if you guys approved that uh, resolution. So if we went forward with this, we would just go on your next agenda item or when you guys felt that it was an option for us to go on as an agenda item. Uh, I can be back to present at that point in time where we ask any answer any questions you guys have. And then um, once that's done, the resolution is completed, the agreements are signed, and then we would go ahead and record those uh, with the county uh, or wherever you guys feel it would be necessary for those to be recorded uh, with your council. Again, uh, this was talked about before, I just want to bring up your, the local adoptions that have happened here have happened with Mountain Dora. Uh, within our district, they are just becoming one of our uh, board members. Uh, Leesburg, New Smyrna Beach, Port Orange, all these are close to you guys. Daytona Beach, Shores, Edgewater, Longwood near me, Oviedo and Sanford. Of course, it's all over the state, but I just wanted to bring up some of the local adoptions for you guys. So I think that was a, a quick overview of the program. I didn't want to get too too deep, but I'm here for any questions that you guys have, and you let me know. We have a question. Um, oh, um, how are the contractors and residents uh, notified that this program exists? Yep. So is it our job to do that? No, sir, it is not. So that, that happens two different ways. Uh, the first way could be through a website. So uh, Pace Equity Boucher is with, they build a website and they decide, you know, they put out whatever marketing material they can to find uh, you know, commercial uh, uh, developers or engineers that would like to work with this program. So they search them that way and, and that can happen also on the residential side. Uh, and then the other way that that happens is the providers themselves will actually go out and work with contractors in the market to explain the program to them and if they would like to add that to their toolkit of financing options like a, uh, like a credit card would be. So if you have your uh, HVAC contractor come to your house, they say, how are you going to pay for this? And it just becomes part of the toolkit of the financing options. So it could be cash, it could be credit card, it could be uh, PACE if you'd like it to be that. Now you listed a bunch of cities and counties. Yes, sir. Um, they have all signed into the agreement. They've all done some form of that resolution. We provide a form of them. So my, my next question is, do you have any cases where it has been used and proven? Uh, excellent job to do whatever you want to call it. Uh, so from so what I could do for you if you'd like that is I can go back to my the residential providers and get feedback from property owners that have used it. I, we do have that. And on the commercial side, I don't know, Shay, if you have anything, that white paper or anything like that you guys have to um, be able to share? Depending on how deep. Okay. Um, you need my name for the record? Yes. Shay, S-H-A-Y, last name. 
in our HAR and will be uh, providing with case equity. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I can certainly provide uh, case studies. My firm specifically works on the commercial side, so all of our cases would be more commercial development uh, uh, examples of where developers have leveraged our financing for low-cost uh, funding of their projects. But uh, I'd be able to provide several of those if, if needed. So do you think we need that too? Well, first of all, I want to hear the whole presentation, and I have a number of questions that I'd like to ask. But I'm going to sure that I'm not getting yeah. involved in someone else's presentation before I ask the question. Oh, no, ma'am. I, I, uh, my presentation, as far as the program goes, is, is finalized. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. But maybe someone else has questions also. Also, oh, taking a presentation? Oh, no, no ma'am. Uh, Shay was just here as one of our uh, providers. In case you guys have questions that maybe I could not answer. I just brought him here, here as a resource. Okay. So since case is not a loan, this is not a loan. No, it is an assessment. And although it does provide you with upfront money for financing, it is attached to the property and repaid through the property taxes and is classified as a non-equity loan property assessment, much like a bond or an Yes, ma'am. Case financing is provided through private capital. Yes. What private source of capital? Uh, multiple providers. Uh, so they do that through different warehouse lines. I, I, I'm not, that is not my side of this. You want to, can you provide some insight? Yeah. yeah. I apologize. It's, so, so as a funding provider, my, my firm, for example, we've raised a $2 billion fund that has primarily come from uh, a couple of West Coast and uh, some Northeast uh, family offices. So private investment that then we are able to fund these types of energy efficient measures. Okay, also, how is the interest determined? I noticed that in a number of various documents that I looked up over the weekend, including the two Florida statutes that you mentioned throughout yours, that uh, it's gold. What is gold? That's a fantastic question. Okay, so, so perhaps I could give you an example of the project that we're looking at here. If, if Brett would be okay with this sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so for the project that uh, we're looking at currently that brings us in front of you today, we're looking at doing financing for 30 years that's fully amortizing at an interest rate of just around 6.1%, if I'm, I, and I'm going off the top of my head here. So when you think about 30-year financing without a personal guarantee attached to that. So in, in the world of finance, um, typical financing of something similar from a structural standpoint, you'd be looking at somewhere around 18 to 20 percent. So when you compare that to six, it's significantly lower. How much money are we talking about? Is it separate from each individual person? Well, yes. 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 So, so yeah. no, that's right. So, so it's, it's per project. Yes. So uh, on the per project side, on the residential side, you're looking at about $20,000. In some cases, it's one was $5,000. In some cases, a little more than that if they're doing a solar uh, project. Our commercial side right now is averaging somewhere around five to 15 million, but that's as senior lenders uh, work through this and banks understand it a little bit more, they're a little bit more willing to lend that money, so we're seeing that, uh, that amount of uh, funding increase. Okay, now, if you don't mind, I would like you to walk me through a scenario. Okay. Okay. I have a $100,000 home. Okay. And I have a $50,000 mortgage on it. Right. Now, I would like to put in maybe solar, maybe put on a new roof, maybe uh, put in new, um, new <laughs> windows. Okay. And it's going to amount to $25,000. All right. With this, could I borrow that $25,000 knowing that I already owe a $50,000 mortgage? You could. It would be like a like your home equity line of credit if you were to walk in. So in your example, you have 50% equity in your home, right? So each provider is a little bit different. Each lender is a little bit different. Like if you walked into your bank right now, a combined loan to value is what you're looking at. 
everybody has a little bit of, of a different standard, but in the case that you're presenting right now, you could surely do the $25,000, you'd be at a 75% you know, combined loan to value in the example that you're explaining to me, which you could do with a home equity line of credit, you could, if you were purchasing a home, you would, you know, that's putting 25% down basically, but yes. So on my $100,000 home, I know it was $75,000 on that. If you made that personal financial decision, yes. But you could, so I want to make sure because, you know, you would be able to make that decision with or without PACE. You'd either be going to a home equity line of credit, you'd be going to a bank, or you might be going and doing that with a credit card where you're at 18 to 25% interest. And I, I mean, which is completely different. So I just want to make sure, I, I'm trying to figure out where you're going, but I want to make sure you realize this is not forced on anybody and that's why we do the confirmed term calls with them. We make sure that this is what they would like to do and we make sure that they understand the terms that, as they sign it on the finance agreement. Okay. Now, you also state that FDCF provides administrative services and there is no cost to the local government. However, in both state statute 163.08 and state statute 197.3632, there is significant local government involvement with both the property appraiser and tax collector. Right. So there well, is, although it may not cost money, there still is significant involvement as far as personnel. Uh, well, not from the town side, but you, you are correct. That is why we have a services agreement with the tax collector and the property appraiser. So th there is involvement with the tax collector, not so much with the property appraiser, but we have on our team of professionals, which I probably should have clarified for you before. So we have a financial advisor, and we have an assessment administrator, and then we have bond counsel, which can be bond or note counsel. But our assessment administrator basically develops the tax role for the tax collector. They need to certify that. But the amount of work that the tax collector or property appraiser does on this program is very minuscule. And by state statutes, they can charge up to 2% each. So that's 4% of whatever that annual assessment amount is. So if you're looking at one of these commercial projects, in all reality, I mean, we'd hope it would not be at 4%, but you're talking about a tax collector that is going to be receiving a healthy sum of money for the services they're providing in this case. Okay, and then who is keeping track of how much money each separate homeowner who goes into this is holding? Is that also the property appraiser, the property appraiser? That's it. So, you're so once we place the assessment, as FDFC, we work with our assessment administrator and we track that and every year we are the ones that work with our assessment administrator and the tax collector to place it on the tax roll. Along with the provider, I'm sure they have their back end office is looking to make sure they're collecting their money and this money is also going to bondholders. So that interest, the principal interest has to be paid. So this is, I wouldn't say it's highly regulated, but it would be very difficult for somebody to do something nefarious with this the funding mechanism that happens here. <coughs> Excuse me, collection. Okay. Oftentimes with bonds, all you have to do is pay the interest, the interest, the interest, and you don't touch the principal. Yeah, that's how not, would this oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. How would how would this be affected? Uh, so the so there's not an interest only part of this program. There are some you can do a capitalized interest for a period of time depending on the construction period and when the uh, tax bill falls, there is a period of capitalized interest there. But at, at the max, I believe that can be 18 months. And then it's principal and interest from that point forward. I believe we've had some requests to do maybe like a two year interest only period. That's very new and that's only on commercial. We do not allow that on residential. Yes and no. So it depends. So on the residential side, if it is a if it is a, a government servicing uh, like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, they require that lien to be uh, paid off if you're going to refinance. On the commercial side, you have um, uh, your senior lender is giving consent 
and it can transfer from owner from the existing owner to the new owner. It can really do that on the, on the residential side, but I can tell you that the majority of them are paid off if you're going to sell your home on the residential side. But they can transfer, it just depends on the lender. My major concern is the fact that we are dealing with a lot of senior people. And sometimes this looks like this is going to be very easy. Okay. You know, I can fix up my house and, and everything's going to be fine. It's going to go on my property tax statement. And sometimes it's not so easy to find. I, I agree. I, I think up front, that's why we try to make sure that the terms are clearly defined. And, and just so you guys know, you have the ability, this is both a residential and commercial program. So if you feel like, especially with a program, excuse me, a project that's happened at this point in time, if you felt like you wanted to move forward with a commercial only part of this program, you could do that. I mean, you have a, a large financing team that is working with the property owner and developer. So you're not going to have a situation where you're going to have a run in with the property owner having an issue. But I would say to, the, to you on the residential side, we also look those over. Do issues happen? They surely do. Contractors, you know, they tend to have issues, but we resolve, at least all of them that I've dealt with, I've had my providers pay off the assessment. So in, in one particular case, we had uh, somebody that was told that it was a government-sponsored program, and it is not. So once that happened, the contractor that actually, his salesperson said that, he knew we were going to come and talk to him. So he just paid he just paid off that assessment altogether for the property owner. Not saying that happens on every single one. I'm just saying to you, the idea that FDSC was going to come and talk to you in this position and say, hey, we're reviewing this, we're looking at this, this is everything that we've seen. You know what I mean? Can you help us in this scenario? Usually that's the case. So but if, if you're comfortable with the commercial program, I would say just because the project's going forward, I'd love for you to consider that. If you've got some reservations on the residential side. We have a resolution that allows for you to consider that in six months from now, and you just see how the commercial program goes. So you don't have to consider both all at once. I just, you know, just in relation to the project, I want to make sure it finds the financing. That's where your comfort level is. Are there any other questions? Yes. What bothers me is that you said that it is not a loan. It isn't a loan. It's, it's an assessment. It's a tax lien. Uh, what's the difference? People got to pay it off. Well, it's, uh, it's an indirect loan, um, right? Indirect. So, so the, the difference is, is that when you go get a loan, you're pulling a credit report on you. The loan is on on the person. So I'm not trying to get fancy. I'm just trying to tell you the difference. So here, the actual assessment is on is really on the property. So when they go to underwrite this project, although they're looking at the property owner, the majority of the underwrite and shake, and if you want to shed light on this. You're really looking at a property, you're looking at the equity in your property, you're looking at multiple underwriting factors for the property. I'll, I'll step back and see if Shea can help answer that question for you. But you're putting a debt on the home, the property. Uh, yes, but on the, pro but on, on the property. You intend to make money on. Uh, yes, I mean, we wouldn't do the program if there wasn't the intent to make, to make money. You know what I mean? So, and and uh, you, you bring up a great question in terms of the, the terminology, I, I guess is what, what we're, we're discussing at this point. It is funding for a project, yes, So, and there is a payback period. The reason why, particularly with regard to commercial properties, is that it's not technically considered a loan, is because it doesn't show up on the balance sheet. If you think about um, a balance sheet and an income statement for a, a company, um, and so the developer would then record the assessment as an expense item, not necessarily as a long-term debt on the balance sheet. So that, that's where it, it, the, the terminology kind of loses its effect when, by calling it a loan, if you will. But for yeah. pragmatic, from pragmatic purposes, it's, it, it is funding for the project. It, it's a loan, but it's a hidden loan, is what you're saying. Well, I would want to admit that it's a loan, indirectly <laughs> or directly. I, I mean, can, it's like, yeah. can, you, can you compare this to a mechanics lien? Uh, well, you, so you could compare. So a contractor could put a lien on the home if they were not paid, but in this case, the financing is always made, right? Uh, but let, let's say. 
let, let, let me try to take this one step further and then I'll let Darren uh, answer a little bit more for you guys. But in, in this uh, case, let's say that somebody um, uh, has an issue paying or for this assessment. It is, it is the property tax bill that's being, where the repayment's happening, okay? So your traditional lien or loan, as you would like to call it, and I agree with you, so I'm, I try to agree with you here. It is a form of a loan. It's just not a loan, it's not a personal loan. It is an assessment on the property. So, I, I mean, I know it's, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure we're in the same, running down the same path here. Um, but the, the difference here is, let's say that somebody, Let's say this, this commercial building and this project, eventually in five years from now, they're unable to make the assessment payment. Our program, uh, the PACE program, does not come after and foreclose on a property. So the, the big difference here is if you have a loan on the property from a bank, they're going to come and if you're not making payments, they're going to foreclose on it because they want, they want the property. In this case, what happens, the lien amount is for one year. It's the, the one year that it's on the tax bill. So let's say in this project, let's call this a million dollar project, and let's say for the one year it was $100,000. $100,000 annual assessment is what is leaned on the property, not the full uh, million dollars. Does that make sense? So it's, I, I mean, I know you're, we're saying the same thing, I just want to make sure that you guys have a correct understanding of the program and, you know, how the financing works. So, and one other question. When, what year did the PACE program start? Um, 2011? Yeah, well, in, in, in Florida or, because it started in California, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it started in California and it's, it's been around approximately 15 years. Okay. Uh, so, but here in Florida, uh, Y Green is a residential provider. They were here before us. I believe the program in Florida has been around for about 10 years, 10 to 11 years. So, so don't, don't proven, quote me on that. a proven track record. Yes, it's, it, it, it's been here. You guys can take, take a look. If you guys want information on the program, white papers on the commercial buildings, if you guys would like customer service uh, satisfaction surveys on the residential side, I can reach out to all the providers and give, them, uh, give you that information. So I'm not hiding anything. Let's put it that way. Okay, I have one more question. Yes, ma'am. Going back to my scenario, where I have a $100,000 home, $50,000 mortgage, $25,000 in improvements are going to be into that house. How long would it take me to, how many years you're saying 25, 30 years? It depends. So, would not take that long yeah. to pay off the 25 Well, now, so, so let, let's just say if you're putting a solar system on your house, you can go out to 25, 30 years because that is what they call the effective useful life of that product. And what we look for, especially on the commercial side, is for an engineer to tell us that that product will last that period of time. So on a traditional deal on, on residential, let's say you're doing an HVAC, you're talking about a 10 or 15 year term. It just depends on the product. It depends on, if it's roofing and you're doing um, three tab versus, um, uh, it just slipped my mind, but it, you, know, you have different type of roofing shingles, you have flat roof. It all depends on the effective useful life of the product. There's no, um, there's no just guessing and throwing a term out there. There's a maximum term that is allowed for each one of the projects or uh, uh, eligible improvements. Okay. Are there any more questions? Well, just getting back, I, I, I sure would like to see a case study of we can we can definitely do what that. Two properties. That's all. You know, from start to finish. I can I can provide that for you. Have yeah, shed yeah. work on that for you. Yes, yeah, sir. And I didn't know if you guys like Darren to say finish up here. I'd just like to summarize just a little bit on how this benefits our community. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of banking programs out there that are all privately run, but the, you know, the, our governments have stepped in and, you know, we've got you know, you know, HUD financing, we've got USDA financing, and then there's the Department of Energy that has pays financing. And really all this financing does is it's out there for, um, in, it's out there for to get lower interest uh, costs to projects. Um, to not use the term loan, I guess, um, but it's, it's to get the cost of things down. Uh, right now, we have lenders under COVID right now who just don't lend, and um, the only way to get them to do things is to 
bring these programs in to say, hey, here's a program that you can use, and hey, the benefit to the community is, is we're going to be less impactful on the infrastructure. And that's where the real key comes in for us architects, is we're building buildings really cheap now. I mean, you can go up and down the road and see what they're doing. Um, you know, they're building things out of wood that probably shouldn't be built out of wood, um, and they're doing this to drive costs down, and that's because that's all they can get in the way of lending. Programs like this come in and, and support the overall lending package. It's not a complete loan on the, on the commercial side. It's usually just a portion that helps you know, give you a better interest rate. Um, and we were actually introduced it from a local bank and said, hey, you should go get a PACE loan. They're the only people that can probably help you with this. And right now, anyway. So these types of programs and having them kind of in our toolkit, in our community toolkit, really help you know, both the residential and the commercial markets build better. And that's what we really need. We need better buildings, better structures that are safer for our communities, and also a way that we can less have impact, less impact on our infrastructure, which is what taxes have to pay for. And if we have less impact on the infrastructure after natural disasters or even water use and some of the things that we're also dealing with in this community, we have a way where we can use less, and less is always better in that sense. We can then put more money into the building structures. And that's why it appeals to architects like me. I think this is something, these are new tools that we're all using in our communities elsewhere, and we'd like to see it used here too, so we can take advantage of that. Um, and especially when it's private money, it's not coming out of the pockets of, of our taxpayers. This is something I think that they're going to want to see. If not now, certainly in the future as things start to uh, I'm tired. Are there, thank you. Are there any other questions from me? No. What is the consensus? Let's go for it. I'm leery of it. No. At this point in time, um, I don't know what the actual consensus is, is it for both the commercial side and the residential side, or just the commercial side? Or what is the, the commission's are you, preference? Are you, are you talking about both commercial and residential? No. I don't, I, don't, I don't like it. What's the question? Are you against both residential and commercial? Or would you go with one or the other? If commercial wants to go with the program, I'd be for it. Residential, I see a little bit of this reverse mortgage. And the reason I I think it's a good idea, we don't have to use it. Okay? And nobody is forced to sign up. I, I think it's another tool for developers, contractors. Um, yeah, I, 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 th I think it's just another tool. And I Fair. think it's a good thing. Mayor Pro Tem, if I may. Uh, the applicant or the presenters this evening have informed me that at this time it would be fine to uh, go forward uh, with the town looking at a resolution just for the commercial side. And depending on how that plays out, maybe in the future coming back around for the residential. But they're fine for you just to consider the commercial this evening. I'd recommend commercial. If that's the way it is, then. Yeah, I don't know. I can go along with the commercial. But I'm, at this point, not residential. I'm just too concerned about it. our senior citizens. I'm just too concerned about it. The staff will proceed with uh, getting a resolution together for your consideration. And in the meantime, we'll get some of those documents, um, as he alluded to, and forward that to you so you can kind of see some of those case studies. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you.